Hello to you all. Uh, I'm Lara Souza, and I'm here to do an interview of CineDB Insights. CineDB Insights is an offspring of CineDB Africa conversation series, a series of in-depth encounters with film professionals from the continent that was developed by a group of, of African film curators as part of CineDB Africa project of Goethe Institute that is now accessible through the e-portal of Durban Film Art Institute, the new home of CineDB Africa. Uh, we are here today with Mohamed Wuma uh, from DOK, Documentary Africa, and we're going to share some ideas around uh, Documentary Film uh, Africa platform. Welcome, Mohamed, and can you please uh, introduce yourself briefly and the work of DOK? Hello, Lara. Thanks for inviting me. And um, so I'm Mohamed uh, Uma. I'm the executive director of Documentary Africa. I'm also a filmmaker and producer. I originally come from the Comoros Island. So um, Documentary Africa is a Pan-African initiative. Uh, it was set up in 2018 in Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, we are a film fund. This is how the the wider documentary ecosystem on the continent and globally knows us as a film fund. But we more than just a film fund because we do grant producers and filmmakers, but we also try to support them in uh, other different ways. And I think we can uh, dwell into that uh, in this conversation, I think. Uh, can you tell us a bit more uh, first about the, the grant support that you have? Uh, where are the divisions? I know that there is for development and for production. Can you tell us a bit more what are the difference between these uh, um, uh, divisions of grant? We have two calls per year. Uh, one call is uh, for the filmmakers and producers, the content creators. And the other call is for regional documentary organizations. So if we're talking about the, the, the call for filmmakers and producers, there are three strands. One is for development. Uh, so we give development grants. Another one is for production. And the other one is for either post-production or impact grants. So if you go back to uh, development, uh, we give uh, from 2,000 to 5,000 USD in development. For production, it can start from 10,000 to 30,000 in production. And in impact or post-production, um, we realized after three years uh, you know, of this program that it was best to almost uh, pay as you go because uh, most of the film that are in the post-production stage uh, need, the needs are very diverse. So you got a film that they really have done the picture locked or they've done the picture lock and the sound or they've done both and then they're looking to have money to subtitles or they're looking to have money for the deliveries or you have films that we granted. I remember uh, No Simple Way Home produced by Sam Sonko. They had the money to do the editing process but they did not have money to do the impact. And the director, I called Mabio, she's from South Sudan. She was really into impact and she wanted to do an impact in South Sudan and in Eastern Africa. So what we decided with the team was to, instead of giving you money for post-production that you've already done, let's just work together on trying to define an impact strategy for the film. So the post-production really depends on the stage where the film is and what the, the team wants exactly with that film. And can can filmmakers with the same project apply for different cycles, uh, granting cycles, for example, uh, development and post-production, or they are excluded from if they already received the, the funding? No, no, we don't have this kind of strict uh, criteria. You know, when you're going through development, we are really happy to see if uh, you know the producers can uh, the producers can come back 
and ask for production or can come back and ask for impact or post because then we know that we've uh, uh, you know when you're granting a project it's a bet you never know if this project's going to go through so by seeing these projects evolve and getting to the next round you know uh, it's very satisfying for us also one thing that is very important is to not is to uh, to uh, for your readers and people going to watch us is like only the producer can apply for the okay so the criteria are very strict because uh, it's not the filmmakers that are going to apply it's the filmmaker has to have a, an african producer attached so for him to apply at those different stages why we do that is because we believe we need to push the african producers to have more value even if they're gonna enter into a co-production international co-production but because we're pan-african we believe if the african producer can have a little bit of more incentive more money or more support then when he or she is entering international co-production he or she is more prepared, you know, to deal with and to go on that in table for, you know, international co-production. And can uh, and can a director be the producer, the own producer, or director producers don't are not eligible? They are eligible, but uh, as we go through a very, because we only have two calls per year and it is one call for filmmakers and producers, so we we take our time, so we're really going to have to do a thorough, a very, very extensive research on who's running the production company, because you and I knows that a director who's a producer, if he doesn't have a team behind, is lying or she's lying to herself, you know. You can, it's not a, a yeah, they can, you can as a director producer do that, but if you're alone and you want to do research, you want to direct, you also want to produce, when are you going to have time to do the all this administrative work of producing? One of the criteria as well is the fact that uh, we're looking at production company that have at least a, uh, a track record of producing maybe short one or two shorts one feature film but at least there's a track record for that production company that they've done something in the country or in the region you know and then we don't ask for them to be like other funds like they have to be selected and the film has to be broadcast because we know it's difficult for producers on the continent to uh, get broadcasting deal but at least they have produced a film, even if it was selected in a regional or national film festival, even if it's a short, we need to have some track record, tangible track record. And of course, the financial records of the and the financial audits and statements of the production company for the from the previous year as well. And what what are the kind of stories that you're looking for? What, what are the um the kind of narratives or the kind of voices that you want to, that your institution want, wants to champ or wants to support? I think uh, because we're one of the first Pan-African film fund for documentary, uh, usually our focus really to, to make sure that uh, filmmakers can tell African narratives. Of course, it's a very broad expression to say African narratives. But uh, what we want to see is uh, 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 filmmakers that are unapologetic, that have the way of saying the African realities from where they live you know, and and to tell that not only to their own constituency or their own cities or country, but to tell that to the world. But at the same time, uh, the way we work is we have uh, readers that are mostly uh, uh, people from the, the wider African documentary ecosystems and even from the global, the diaspora. Uh, but the readers, what we do, we shortlist uh, a, a huge uh, bulk of, uh, of uh, projects, we give that to the readers, and then the readers, you know, do the shortlist, and then we have another process when we have the shortlist from the readers, then we do one-to-one -one with, the, with the teams to understand exactly where they are, where they want to go. 
that's how we can say, okay, this is a very solid team. Let's push them. And uh, we're also looking at, you know, um, uh, not really, we don't have any specific like uh, themes or, you know, uh, issues or whatever. We're really looking at, uh, uh, you know, sometimes we are, we are trying to find first time, you know, filmmakers or mid entry level filmmakers and mid entry level producers so we can push because we want to push new generations of documentary filmmakers so uh, if you're new if you entering this is your first or second film you have more chance to go through the okay than if you are like in a very experienced filmmakers we're also trying to push you know uh, regions where we think like it could make an impact it happened to us that we had two projects, one coming from a country where there's like, where there's infrastructure and another country where it's coming from a country where there's less infrastructure, there's less things. So we're gonna, we're gonna favor the, 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 the project that's coming for the country where we know if we don't push uh, that team, it's going to be difficult, very, very difficult for that team to go through to the next steps. That's really great because our continent is so diverse in terms of opportunities, in terms of strengths or fragilities that it's it's really appealing to to hear from a fund that understands this kind of uh, landscape so well that can can champ um, filmmakers from different realities with different kind of needs and support. Can you tell us a bit more what are the other opportunities inside of Toke? for filmmakers, um, not only uh, related to yes. financing? Yes, yeah, so uh, we have another one, which is another strand, which is we support regional documentary organizations. So we realize, like you said, this is a huge continent and then we cannot be everywhere. And uh, our financial muscles are limited like any organization, especially in this documentary space. Um, so we've decided since last year to uh, open a call for documentary organizations. Last year, we financed four documentary organizations, uh, Feeder Doc from, uh, for North Africa, Kudugu Doc for West Africa, the Documentary Association of South Africa, uh, and then DocuBox for East Africa. And each of those uh, organizations that we financed, they did uh, they did, for example, Kudugu, uh, uh, they did the festival. Uh, Feed the Dog, they used the money to bring like uh, uh, writers and filmmakers there to do their, to do their um, the thing, which is called La Ruche Documentaire. So it helped them, you know, uh, uh, strengthen that, that program. Uh, idea, the, 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 the Association of Documentary of the Filmmakers from South Africa, what they did, they had this program around impact. So they did that. And DocuBox, they used the money to do a program called My Story, My Lens, where they went outside of Nairobi and the big cities of Kenya. They went to remote places and they trained wannabe filmmakers. And we do not interfere in how they're setting up the programs, how they're designing, which uh, mentors they want to bring in. We do not interfere in that. We just like, okay, here a bit of money that we have that will help you strengthen your organization and get you going for another year. So we found it's very, it's more efficient. It's more practicable because there's no way we're going to know better than Isham and his team what's happening in Morocco or North Africa. They've been there, they know it's the region. And the same for Michelle in the West Africa. Uh, so this is how we work when it comes to training. But we also have requests from uh, uh, film labs. So uh, we had requests from Waga Film Lab. Uh, so we gave awards. So on, uh, on the documentary strands of Waga Film Lab, it was monetary prices or mentorship. Uh, we also had requests from Yaounde Film Lab, where we've been mentoring uh, one project per year from Yaounde Film Lab. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen because uh, Jedone Alaka, uh, the man who created that lab, has uh, unfortunately passed away a couple of weeks ago. 
So we, we hope the lab will continue, but we will know about that in the next FESPACO. Um, we also uh, had requests from uh, uh, Encounters. Encounters has a rough cut lab. So we've been sponsoring the lab uh, these last two years. It's uh, an editing lab. It's a uh, design and program by Khalid Shamis, who's an editor from South Africa. So those labs, they come to us. Um, the conversation is as follow. We say, if there is enough space for documentary projects, then it's interesting for us. If, we, if there's not enough space, there's no way we're gonna engage in that. So this is also another way to support the wider community by helping those labs, especially if they have, uh, for example, we did support Indaba when it started, the Creative Producers Lab, but we realized it was tailored made for fiction producers. So the conversation now with the team at Indaba is to try to, you know, design something that's going to be tailor made for documentary producers or then have more space for documentary producers on the continent. And um, there's also. Um, uh... Go on. No, I was I was asking I was gonna ask you about um, for example the ACP uh, produ producers training for example, and the other kind of mm -hmm. uh, initiatives like that really um, that you also uh, organize for filmmakers and producers. Yes, definitely. And this one came up. It wasn't uh, it wasn't the Doke's ID. It was more uh, OAF calling us. And then, uh, you know, and then uh, meeting us and say, we've been following you since you started and we like the work you're doing for the wider documentary film ecosystem. Uh, we have this uh, money that's going to come from ACP. We want to do training programs for documentary projects. And then we told them it was a very tough conversation because you say, what we do, we already do it. Just give us the money and we keep doing what we do. <laughs> and of course, as you know, they said, it doesn't work like that. They say, but you guys called us, you know, just to get it short. We say, okay, let's go design something with you guys. And we can, can be, we, we will be aligned with what we were doing already. So that's how we, we ended up co-designing this program where you have nine uh, feature films that are being mentored through we chose the mentor so we had the we had the upper hand we chose the mentor and with the mentor we designed the mentorship and and the follow-up etc etc uh, we also have uh, people coming to us like organizations like universities for example we had a we did a seminar on documentary on the continent with a U.S. universities because they want to know exactly what's happening. So sometimes you have requests from scholars from university uh, to understand exactly what is the landscape. And we like that because it's a space where we can build knowledge and we can share knowledge about the continent and the reality as well. And then uh, we also uh, partner with festivals. Uh, we have an event at FESPACO that's called Doc Day. Uh, it was an initiative that was created by Jean-Marie Tino 30 years ago at FESPACO. He only managed to do two editions. And then Jean-Marie came to us and said, um, you know, um, uh, I don't have the strength anymore to do this kind of event. It's difficult with me for FESPACO, but you guys, can you just, can you just, bring that idea back because I think FESPACO need a space for documentary. So we have this event now with FESPACO called Dog Day and we try also to have different events with uh, with uh, 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 big festivals where we can highlight African documentaries. We're also working on a, on a program that's called ADAPT. Uh, initially DOKE was funded through a report uh, and we want to break down the report and make it useful for the for our different constituencies. So we want to make it useful. We want to get that knowledge to the film practitioners, to the producers, to the scholars, to everybody. Say okay, and then we want that report to be updatable. So and something practicable. 
Like you can go on that platform and then you know everything about documentary on the continent. So in in just to wrap up a bit, uh, from what I understand, filmmakers can can get in touch with you with projects, with initiatives through other institutions, through other festivals. Um, do you have any open call now uh, for, yes. for finance, yes. for granting? Yes, we have the, the, the next open call will be launched during the Dog Day at Fespaco, uh, the first, March the 1st. It will, it will be the call for regional documentary organizations, meaning all regional documentary organizations that have a, a track record of five years on, in one region of the continent or several that want to do training programs, distribution and promotion programs through festivals or doing mentorship programs through residency workshops, they can apply to that call. It will be open on our website from f March the 1st uh, for six weeks. And then for content creators, filmmakers and producers, um, the, the call will be launched uh, one month later, so April the 1st, uh, for another six weeks. This is for the classic call for development production and past uh, the classic grants. So we have two calls this year. One will be launched at FESPACO and then one month later, the call for films. Okay, and the, the best way to reach you is through the website, through Instagram, yeah. Facebook. What is the best channel to, to get in touch with you? Me, I'm very old school, as you know, so I'm not really much into social media, but the best way to reach us is at info at documentaryafrica.org, or you can also write to Austin, our communication officer, he's much, much younger than me and is into all these social media. It's comms at documentaryafrica, comms, C-O-M-M-S, at documentaryafrica.org. And then through the website, you can click on our different social handouts, you know, the Instagram, whatever they call it. And then you can reach that. Austin is on the is on lookout for that. And we also have been receiving a lot of, uh, so I just want to say we receive a lot of um, requests for mentorship. So sometimes me and people from the team, we do the mentorship because we've been, we've been, uh, having a lot of requests for mentorship. If we take time to respond to that, it's because we have a lot of them and those mentorship are free. So we do one, two or sometimes three sessions to try to unlock, you know, uh, uh, stories, but those ones are free. So we, sometimes we cannot respond like, uh, on the go. It takes time if it's a request for free mentorship sessions. That's great. That's wow. That's that is a really good chance. And even if it takes time, I think it's something that filmmakers uh, really need to uh, grab some some of that opportunities. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Was a pleasure. Thank to you. Thank hear you from you. And um, yeah. Uh, filmmakers around the continent, uh, please reach DOK if you need support, if you want support, um, if you need mentorship, and if you want to uh, just reach them about their other initiatives. Thank you so much and have Thank a you. good day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.